Hey everybody, welcome back to the Weather Farm. We've got a record-breaking pattern unfolding this week and it's going to bring three big stories. First of all, we're talking about the coldest air of the season so far with record-breaking lows and even record-breaking minimum high temperatures across most of the country. Second, a major threat, flooding threat is unfolding across parts of Texas, Oklahoma, into Arkansas. And finally, we are keeping a close eye on the tropics. What is up with Tropical Storm Fernand? Let's break it all down, starting what's happening right now across the United States. As we begin our Tuesday morning, we are watching an area of high pressure across the Four Corners region. That is providing that clockwise rotation with around that area. So moisture is being pulled up out of the Gulf of California and the Pacific Ocean, riding through Arizona into Utah and Colorado, and then down through Kansas, Oklahoma, and eventually into Arkansas and northern parts of Texas. And this has brought a lot of rain over the last several days. We're also watching that cold front that's now made its way down through Florida and off the East Coast, and we're seeing cool temperatures for August across most of the eastern half of the United States. And up to the north, we're watching a series of lows make their way across the Canadian provinces, which is going to continue that northwesterly flow and that cool pattern for the eastern half of the United States. So let's put our map into motion over the next 48 hours. We see those storms continuing across Oklahoma and Arkansas for our Tuesday, but we continue to see upflow on our Wednesday and a continuing of that pattern with that clockwise rotation. We see an area of low pressure to the south and east of Hudson Bay. That's going to bring yet another trough into the northeast as we close out this work week. And off the shore, we're watching an area of disturbed weather continue to make its way out to sea. And over the last 72 hours, we have seen a lot of rain across parts of central Kansas down through central Oklahoma. We have seen widespread one, two, even these yellows indicating areas of three to five inches of rain across this area. But as we go through the remainder of the week, as we continue to see that clockwise rotation around that high pressure out across the Four Corners region, we're going to see those rains continue to pile up. Parts of the panhandle of Texas down towards Dallas, you can see one, two, maybe even as much as four inches of rain. We're going to see a large swath into western Arkansas as well of two to four inches of rain throughout the remainder of the week. Now this part of the country, it has been plagued by drought-like conditions for most of the summer. But this is too much rain and it's too quick. And so it's actually going to be a little bit harmful because it's going to provide the opportunity for flash flooding where that rain's not going to have that time to soak down into the ground. And instead it's going to run off and create that flash flooding. So we're, unfortunately, we're trading the drought condition for flash flooding uh, potential across this part of the country for the remainder of this week. But getting back to our big story, that cold air is associated with this trough that continues to dive in. And as that next storm moves across Hudson Bay, it's going to bring down yet another trough, and it's going to keep those northwesterly winds flowing through the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, into the eastern half of the United States as we approach the Labor Day weekend. Out west, we have high pressure that is building, so we're going to see warm temperatures across the Four Corners region into the Intermountain West. But look, as we get towards our Labor Day, and right behind it, we see yet another trough beginning to dig in the west. That's going to provide those southwesterly winds as we get into the first week of September. And that is our hint that a pattern change is in store as we begin the new month of September. But let's look at our temperature anomaly map for the remainder of this week. And on it, we see a lot of blues and even purples indicating 10, 15, 20, as much as 30 degrees below normal for our temperatures. Now, a lot of this across parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, that's going to be associated with those storms and those rain showers and that thick cloud cover that is going to be moving across this area throughout the middle of this week. That's going to keep temperatures here down in the 60s and 70s. But across the Ohio Valley into the northeast, we're seeing temperatures struggle to get to the 60s or to the low 70s. As we make our way down through Florida, you're going to be struggling to get to the 80s, especially for parts of Georgia and northern Florida by Wednesday and Thursday of this week. But out west, we see those warm temperatures, 5 to 10 degrees across parts of Wyoming into Montana, especially across the Canadian province for this work week. So let's take it day by day for our Tuesday. Those 90s are going to be really confined across Texas and Louisiana, 80s through the southeast up to the east coast. We see that first jab of cool air bringing temperatures in the 60s and 70s for our northeast as well as the Ohio Valley. We have 80s across the northern plains. Out west, it's 90s. We don't really see those warm, excessive temperatures even across the desert because we're going to have that flow of moisture into Arizona. That's going to help keep temperatures down into the 90s to near 100 for our Tuesday. As we go into Tuesday night into Wednesday, we're going to watch for areas here across Ohio into Pennsylvania and New York to be down into the 40s. In those higher elevations, we could be approaching temperatures that could see a 38 or a 39 here or there, but especially across parts of Ontario into Quebec and just south of Hudson Bay we will see some of the coldest temperatures that we have seen since May and June. Across the Central Plains, we're seeing temperatures in the 50s. We're seeing 50s for nighttime lows across parts of the southeast. As we go into our Wednesday, it's more of the same. Here across parts of Kansas into Oklahoma and 
Arkansas, temperatures will be held down because of that rain cover. 60s and 70s in the northeast, 80s in the south, 90s for Texas. We're starting to warm up just a little bit across the southwest. And in interior California, we're seeing temperatures 95 to 100. So as we go into our Wednesday night, this is into Thursday morning. This is when we think we could see some of the coldest areas across northern Minnesota, through the UP of Michigan, even into northern Wisconsin. We're going to see widespread 30s across parts of western Ontario, but those 30s could even cross the U.S. border, where we've already seen low temperatures this week in the low to mid 30s across far northern extremes of Minnesota. So this will be our coolest night across the Appalachians. Temperatures here will be in the 40s and 50s. We're seeing a rebound in the warm temperatures across parts of Texas. Nighttime lows here are still very high and sultry with that humidity, 70 to 80 degrees. And out across the desert, you're struggling to dip below 90 degrees. And as we go into our Thursday, that warmth starts to build back across parts of Texas into Oklahoma, 90s to near 100, 80s across the central plains. But we're still holding on to that cool weather across the eastern half of the United States as we see that next system make its way past Hudson Bay, bringing yet another dose of northwesterly flow winds and cooler temperatures for the eastern half of the United States. But across parts of Alberta, you're warming to near 90 in central Alberta for your Thursday. And the Climate Prediction Center agrees with our forecast. As we go throughout this week into the first couple of days of September, we're going to see much below normal temperatures for a good chunk of the country. This is going to be primarily associated with those storms as they continue to move through the central plains later this week, across the eastern half of the United States as we continue to get that northwesterly flow. We're going to see below normal temperatures. Out west as that ridge continues to build, we're going to have above normal temperatures for that part of the country. But as I mentioned, we get into the first few days of September. Here we are September 1st. This is the jet stream map. We're watching that trough begin to move off the east coast. We're watching another system start to dig here across the northern Rockies into the central plains. That's going to turn our winds from the southwest, and that's going to set the stage as we get to the end of the first week of September for severe weather across the central plains into the Ohio Valley and warmer temperatures returning to this part of the country. So while we have enjoyed this taste of fall in the eastern half of the United States, it is going to be short-lived, and we'll, we'll turn to more seasonal temperatures for our September. I do want to jump down to the tropics for just a moment with this forecast. We do have tropical storm Fernand that is centered just to the north and east. Here's Bermuda. It continues to move off to the north and east uh, away from land and really doesn't pose any threats to any land masses. Mainly shipping paths and trade routes are going to be impacted most. The system that we saw down here around the Lesser Antilles, it's really getting, becoming much more disorganized. Invest 99L the National Hurricane Center has stopped issuing investigations and advisories on this particular system. But we're going to continue to monitor it as it moves into the Caribbean waters. It is a little favorable here, but it is also going to struggle to develop into an organized system. But we're going to watch as it continues to meander. Will it go into parts of Mexico? Will it make a turn to the north and west and get into the Gulf where it could encounter some more favorable? That's still to be determined. The models are really all over the place with this particular system. So we're just going to watch it right now. And for the time being, the National Hurricane has stopped issuing any updates on that storm. But as I mentioned, Hurricane or Tropical Storm Fernand is going to continue to move off to the northeast, becoming a tropical depression by the time we get to Wednesday. It is peaking right now with winds at about 60 miles per hour. We don't expect any further intensity with this storm. We actually expect it to become extra tropical by the time we get to the end of this week. And I know this is a big travel weekend. It is the unofficial end of summer. It's also the end of meteorological summer. Meteorological fall begins on September 1st. So I do want to give you a preview of temperatures as you begin to plan for this upcoming weekend. We're going to see a return to cooler weather across the northeast, warm conditions across parts of Texas for our Friday. As we go into Saturday, we still have that area of disturbed weather across parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, into Mississippi. That's going to impact some of those college football games as they take place on our Saturday. Here temperatures are going to be down in the 70s, still cool in the northeast, but that warmth is starting to build on the backside and across the northwest as that ridge continues to build and we see that troughiness across the eastern half. Sunday, we see that warmth from Montana down through the central plains. Down through Texas, you're going to have a little bit more showers for your Sunday. That's going to help keep your temperatures a little bit cooler. The deserts are going to be warm, 110 to 115, 100s and 90s across parts of Idaho and eastern Washington, 80s across the southeast into Florida. And for our Labor Day, we're going to see not return to the 90s across the Dakotas, through the central plains, down to Texas, even making their way back over to Atlanta, where you could be in the upper 80s for your Labor Day. Return to normal across most of the Ohio Valley as well, and continued warm across the western half of the United States. So I want to recap just a little bit. We're going to have flooding rain this week across parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and into Arkansas. We're going to have that record-breaking cool weather spreading across much of the United States with frost possible in some of those most sensitive and coldest areas of the country. And the tropics, 
Tropical Storm Fernand is no worry, but we're going to continue to monitor further development as we approach the peak of hurricane season. Enjoy this cool down. It's some of the nicest late August weather that we have had in years. Let me know in the comments down below. What is the coldest temperature you've seen this, come, this week for your particular area? What are you looking forward to this Labor Day weekend? Are you going to a college football game? Drop some of those tailgating recipes down in the comments section. Thank you for watching. We hope to have another video out on our Thursday morning, which will give us a clearer picture of our Labor Day weekend forecast and a preview of what does meteorological fall hold for most of the United States. Have a great day, and we will see you soon.